Hey everybody, my name is James. I've been working in the Near ecosystem for a few years now. I've been learning to code using Near as well. So if you're like me, you know, trying to make your way in the world of tech and you don't know where to start, I'll point you right here to Near Social, which is the product that Cameron referenced as just one part of this bigger Near blockchain operating system. And it's kind of like a unified identity protocol for anyone who is building on Near or using Near. And it's really cool because you have these composable widgets or front-end components that you might find in your typical React or Vue, Angular, you know, applications. And a lot of the infrastructure that we use today for DeFi or DAOs and NFTs relies on Web2 front-end or off-chain features that are not reliable, they're you know not decentralized. So what we're doing is building a system for decentralized front-end, and we're calling it the blockchain operating system because just like Linux or Windows or Mac, you know, this operating system makes it easier for users to interact with blockchains. And that means any blockchain, not just near. So the real magic of Boss would be that you could use the front end components to interact with any blockchain. So you could talk to a contract that is running on Ethereum or a contract running on a Cosmos blockchain or anything you know, under the sun of, of the blockchain ecosystem overall. So the code for the front end lives on near and it's actually stored in a contract that we call the social database. And that's uh, what we're talking about when we say near social. But there are various gateways for interacting with that contract. And there's a virtual machine that uh, runs under the hood of those gateways, enabling a React-like developer experience. So essentially what we're doing is learning how to build React code on-chain. And this diagram represents the blockchain operating system. So that's near. You know, we're looking at the protocol, at the base layer, great infrastructure that Cameron referenced. You know, we have all this amazing tooling and a data platform for building whatever you would be able to build anywhere else and more. So, you know, that's for building contracts or indexers or you know the the kind of full stack of blockchain development. But what we're talking about today is the front end, which you know, enables the truly decentralized applications. On top of which you can build these great experiences for users, you know, fast onboarding, and even stuff like chat and, and uh, more real-time interactions. And using this diagram that you saw before, we can take what we saw in the previous slide and put it in the green rectangle. So it's the same thing you saw in the previous slide, but now you can visualize how it connects to other blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, there's Basic Attention Token and Brave Browser, which is a multi-chain, you know, kind of gateway, and Sweat, which is actually on Near natively, and it's an example of the scalability of Near. It did a, an airdrop to 20 million users in, you know, less than a day. Uh, so it's just a visualization of how the core blockchain operating system actually supports the multi-chain ecosystem, and. Here's the basic idea that, that we want to you know, bring home today, right? So composability is the benefit of the blockchain operating system. And you might have heard this word before talking about smart contracts because you have money Legos and DeFi where you can you know, easily combine different contracts and data from those contracts. And all of that is kind of like the new back end. But what we have now is a composable on-chain front-end solution. So all of these components are greater than the sum of their parts. You can see this page and each individual component you know, gives rise to the, the user experience on, on this uh, domain. So what we have is different components made by individuals and this application actually brings in components from various people. So not the same person has to build everything on the same page. And that's really cool because otherwise you'd have to go clone a GitHub repository and you know make your own version and push it and then 
maybe you do a pull request and it gets merged. You know, that's just a different experience than building together with everything on chain. So the front end code being on chain provides that composability and it can be a really um, holistic experience for builders because now you have composability on both, you know, sort of the back end and the front end. And what that means would be composability across networks. So you can pull in data from an Ethereum contract, bring it into your on-chain widget or your, your component, which is just JavaScript, and then you might pull in data from Near or from a Cosmos blockchain or whatever blockchain you prefer, and you can use those uh, data in your component, which is all on-chain, and that's now a composable piece of you know widget code that others can fork or you know they can reuse it, um, and, and that's groundbreaking. To me, that's a huge deal because never before could you really bring data into the front end across chains in such a reliable way, in such a you know, secure and, and really you know, flexible way. But long story short is composability is why we're here. The unstoppable nature of this would be another use case for you know, certainty in the face of regulatory you know, risks or, or uh, you know, maybe there's some kind of uh, censorship resistance that you're looking for, but at the core of it, composability is why BOSS matters. And um, I'll go through a, a quick sort of like workshop, uh, but if you want to follow us and, and get uh, emails about all our cool events that are coming up, we're doing weekly workshops to delve more into building on Near and building on the front end platform that I just showed you. Um, and we're going to go through a quick tutorial and we have a learn to earn challenge for this hackathon. So, if you want to build your own page, you can fork a tutorial widget that I made. I'll show you in a second. And all you have to do is customize that page and save it, and you will get $50. So, you want to learn how to build widgets on the blockchain operating system? There you go. It's your chance to you know take a little bit of time this hackathon, learn something new, and it could change your career tra trajectory, it could change your life, it changed mine. So I want to invite all of you to participate in that challenge. Find me if you want to take five, ten minutes and do it. I would love to sit down with anybody. And it's really simple. You can do it in three clicks. Um, but the idea is that we want to get you started, and then we have prizes for builders. And this means you can actually build on another blockchain and create your front end on Near using this platform and be eligible for both prizes. So if you want to build on, on another blockchain, you can use this for your front end and still be eligible for the near prizes. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but of course, you can build on near, you can write a smart contract, you can build your whole application on near, and that would, of course, be eligible as well. Uh, so that's just a quick rundown of the prizes. Hopefully, you had a chance to get the newsletter. But now let's dive in to the three aha moments of near social. So we've kind of gone through the first the big idea, right? All of this you see on the screen here, this would be an example of a gateway. So we go to the domain near.social. There's another gateway, if you prefer, it's called um, near discovery. We can pull that up as well. Oh, it's already pulled up here. Yeah, so the cool thing about this, you know, everything on the page here is a component, and the code for those components is actually stored on chain. So anybody can go get the code from the chain and use it in their own page or their own application. So if we go up here to the top and we want to view the details of this component, this is the activity page that you just saw. This is the code for it. Here are the dependencies on the right. And you can actually go and uh, fork this. So you can take this code and make your own version of it and uh, even, you know, see the preview of, of what we just saw. So this, this component is available across gateways. So that's, that's the, the, the first aha moment is that all the code on this platform is on chain. Plain and simple. Anything you see on here, you can dig into it, find the code, fork it, make it your own. The second big deal is that you actually have both uh, gateways have all of the components, so, um, and, and there's more gateways, but if we go here and um, we want to look at this uh, component, so this is the activity page on alpha.near.org. 
which is one of the gateways. It's a newer gateway, it has kind of a, a nicer look and feel. This one is, is the older, the original gateway, but if we, if we go to this URL, if you didn't see what I did there, I copied the path of the widget for the activity page of the other gateway. And now we're gonna go there and we have the same page on this gateway. So the code is actually stored on chain, so it's available on both gateways. And we can do the same thing if you want. Um, you know, we can we can go to this and we, we would just uh, you know replace this with um, the mob.near account who is the illustrious Eugene the Dream, who is the creator of your social. Um, and then you can go to the, his homepage widget and, and boom, you know, now we're on alpha.near.org but it looks like the near.social homepage. So that's, that's the idea of composability across gateways. But now let's get into composability across networks. Because this gateway is really unique because it's the first one that supports you uh, connecting to Ethereum. So instead of connecting to near, uh, you actually have a way to connect your Ethereum wallet right here. So as you can see, you can use Wallet Connect or you know, whatever uh, preferred Ethereum wallet it, it, you would actually use. Um, but when you go into one of these components, we will take this uh, Lido component. So this is a staking widget. You know, all of this code is on, uh, on chain, like, like we discussed. Um, but you can actually see how um, when we, we go, oh, oops, sorry, then uh, fork this. So now, um, we are actually looking at code that's written for Ethereum. So this is a little bit different than the code written for a near contract or for a near application, um, but it's still on near. So this code is is actually stored on the near blockchain in the social database. And then when we want to save it, we're actually using a near account. So you need your near account in order to save the widget code to near, but when you have a user on the page, they don't need a near account. They can just interact with an Ethereum contract using their MetaMask or whatever. So this is the, the big idea of the multi-chain ecosystem connected through a blockchain operating system that provides you know, accessible components to everybody who wants to build on any blockchain. So there's the, the three aha moments. You know, All the code is on chain. Uh, on chain. You have the composability across the gateways, and then, of course, this much bigger idea of composability across networks and, and multi-chain overall. So I think that's the most exciting part of it, is now you, you don't really have to choose which blockchain you're building on. You don't have to get locked into one ecosystem. You can build for multiple communities and, and really just you know, provide the best possible user experience um, at the end of the day. So. Now we'll get back into this uh, tutorial. So if you're following along, you can go to hack.near.social. So that's the short link to this page. And this widget is an example of a customizable page. And so this is another kind of cool thing about Near Social. Um, you can actually edit pages and if I edit this, it won't change it for you. So you can still go to hack.near.social and see the same thing. But it would change it for me. So I would actually have whatever I'd like to see on that page. Um, and it's really useful when you want to have maybe a, a custom menu. Like you, you want to come in here and we could add, you know, like a, a widget for notifications, right? Um, so let's. Can search for notification. Actually, let's do Flappy Boss. It's more fun. Flappy Boss is a game that we're gonna add to our home page. Uh, so it's just like Flappy Bird, right? Um, you know, you can kind of play it. It's it's a good example of just a fun little widget. You know, whoops. Now I can save my score, but it's not a very good score. I won't do that. Well, we, you can ha happily play with any of the games available. But what I'm trying to oh, I didn't save. I'm sorry. Um, whoops. So if I add the Flappy Boss to page and then save it, I'm actually saving to my settings here. So I'm gonna save this. Right here we can uh, edit whichever tag we'd like to filter 
the widgets by. So now, under this uh, all tutorial section, we can see all of the widgets or components that have the dev tag, because I just changed it to dev. Before it was guide. So if we change it back, this is what you'll see. So that's what you want to do. You just kind of explore the available widgets, filtering them by your tag, and just pick your favorite tag. Maybe we do meme. You know, that, that's a fun one. So we'll save, we'll save that as meme widgets. And then step two is that we're going to update this widget. So this is an example of composability, plain and simple. We're talking to another widget, and we're getting this source path here. So all you have to do is change this out and put in whatever widget you want. So it just can't be the one that it already was. So I'm going to put in the Flappy Boss again. I think it's, that's how you do it. Or uh, it's a uh, microchip. So that, that's a, uh, now, um, it's not the right name. Sorry, one second. Uh, Flappy, oh, it's game.flappy. Boss, sorry about that. Um, so we, this is a good example of why why you gotta you know be careful what you type. So this is the challenge here. Make sure we spell everything right. Um, all right. So now we can see Flappy Boss, right? So you can change it to whatever widget you like. And then the third step, final step, is that now we're going to use a template. So instead of just referencing any widget and pulling it into your page, we're going to use this template, which is the component card. And we're going to feature three widgets that we like. So your job is to go find three cool widgets, and then you just do the same kind of thing you did before, where you take the source path and you put it in to this part. Um, but instead, you're going to do it right here. So it's underneath the template, which is the source path of this widget that we're pulling in and we're gonna pass in the props of the source path for another widget that we want to feature. So I'm gonna put in my, uh, my DAO project. If you like DAOs, let's talk. Um, you know, we, that's all you have to do to get 50 bucks and some swag. So it's a really fun way to just explore the different widgets available and you can you know, learn some JavaScript along the way. And if you're interested in building further, talk to me about what we're doing on the platform. The main use case is education and collaboration. So we're all building together, and, and that's really the, the most exciting part of it. Yeah. yeah, so what we're going to do this weekend is we're going to create a sprint plan. And we have this gigs board. So uh, if you don't know, Pagoda is formerly known as Near Inc. They're kind of like the core dev team of Near, and they made this component, which is called the Developer Governance Gigs Board, and it has a lot of cool stuff. Like if you're looking for the most advanced widget, here you go. It's it's got the most bells and whistles. It has a, a unique contract that it uses for permissions. It has you know all these uh, different uh, types of content that you can publish. It has tags, it has author filtering. It's it's a great widget to dig into if you really want to like see the limits of, of what people are doing right now. Uh, and the other cool thing, the other advanced widget would be the everything widget. So if you're interested in bringing off-chain components into your, your widget, let's talk about everything. Uh, but this one represents a process for sprint plans. So what we have is if you go in here and you type in hashtag sprint, so we can find some of the sprint plans that people are sharing. So here's one that I wrote, and uh, it's, it just ended. My, my uh, previous sprint just ended Friday. So I'm creating a report and another plan for the upcoming two weeks. And you can do it however you want. You can do a one-week sprint, a three-week sprint. All you have to do is just let people know what you're building. And then you can even request funding. You could request support. You could talk about challenges and ask for feedback and ask for you know, guidance or you know, just let people know what's blocking you or what is, is hard for you to, to figure out and, and people will jump in and, and help you learn. And I'm, I'm sure there's somebody who's already thinking about 
problems if you encounter them. So please share. And uh, what we'll do is we'll have a sprint plan for hashtag NYC. So this is going to be a part of the local community we're building together. So if you want to build stuff for NYC, you just throw in the hashtag NYC. So you can do a sprint plan that's, you know, this one is about community and no code onboarding. It's, it's like a, a page builder. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm polishing up the, the sprint report and the plan for next two weeks um, based on this, this plan. But uh, we could have a plan that is made for NFTs, but it's also related to the NYC community because you're based here and you're collaborating with others at our workshops and you know getting to know people through the blockchain operating system and the social network that is provided, kind of like a GitHub that it's, that's on chain. Um, but the, the goal that we're, we're going to deliver you know, this weekend is a new sprint plan. And so if you would like to participate, you can be included in this sprint plan and there can be retroactive bounties or even you know, hiring opportunities. Like you, you can get a job by participating in this planning process because this way we can actually understand what we need and not have like unnecessary duplication of efforts and it's just like a better way to learn and, and make sure that we're thinking through like what we're building and we're not just hacking away and, and going all over the place. Like we're actually coordinating. So if you want to participate, you know, find me, we can do the tutorial, you can spec out a project, a, a product or a project that you want, to, you want to build in the next two weeks. And then we can talk about how you can get from here to there. And we're, we're here to support you, we're here to help you learn, build and grow. So I really just can't wait to meet you and I'm happy to take questions if we have any. Uh, but yeah, thanks for bringing up the sprint planning. We definitely want to get more people involved. And it's a great way to earn by learning. So you keep learning and keep building after this hackathon, and, and you keep finding opportunities. Does that make sure? Yeah, everyone asked me for internships. Um, there's not like traditional internships, or at least there's very few in Web3. It's about you participating in like the open source community, providing value, and then you get hired. Like that's generally how it flows. Um, just for context, because I, everybody asks me this. Like, this is borderline an internship, just to be clear. Yeah, and it's, it's a great learning experience just for like getting into the space, too. If you're not familiar with how like Web3 operates, it's, it's much more open, it's much more kind of like go-getter mentality, you know, self-starters are very much encouraged. But I think it's also very welcoming and, you know, there's a very supportive community that you know wants other people to learn how to help others. You know that's the goal here. Like, if we can find somebody who's not only building cool stuff but wants to help others build cool stuff, then you're you're gonna find ways to you know get hired in this space. I guarantee. But it's it's a journey. So take your time. Figure out what's most interesting to you. And yeah, like if you're studying a particular topic, I bet there's a a way that could overlap with blockchain technology, you just have to know where to look or, um, you know, just explore until you find something that fits. Yeah, any questions? All right. We got some merch too if you guys want for sticking around. Thank okay. you.